Arrakis is this unrelenting anvil against which people are beaten and shaped and forged into something that's stronger. Survival, MMO. Singularly, these two game genres have never been my particular forte. However, I've also never played a game based on the Dune universe, and this alone has already piqued my interest. I was a huge fan of this book growing up, loved the world Frank Herbert built. It was one of the best books I've ever read. Might be my favorite book ever. Certainly my favorite science fiction book ever. But we have a new game to look forward to, and it might be the first time that both genres of MMO and survival have been merged together, or at least the first time we have an opportunity to, to see this merger happen in a way that is done very well. As with every new game, you have to temper expectations, but on the surface, there's a lot to be excited about with Dune Awakening. Robust customization, crafting of just about everything you could possibly imagine, and a base building system that looks like it might be one of the highlight stars of this game. Speaking of base building, one of the coolest things I maybe have heard about this game so far is the idea that you're going to be able to build a base create a blueprint of that build, sell it on the market for in-game currency to other players so they may use your creations, essentially making one of the character arcs of this game that you could potentially do an architect. This same structure will also be able to be applied to crafting unique materials. This is one of the most unique and cool aspects of this game, I think, and one of the things that, for folks who maybe don't necessarily want to be into the PvP aspects of this game, will give them an opportunity to create an entirely new experience all to themselves. But for those of you who want the PvP experience, or the connected experience, more so connected, guilds are going to be a part of this game as well, which I think shouldn't be a huge surprise considering that it is an MMO. Large-scale potential battles with other player-held guilds is something that is going to be a reality on Arrakis in Dune Awakening. That is what I'm interested in. There will also be the very obvious skill trees and class setups, i.e. Bene Gesserit, Scout, what have you. But to talk about that more, I'm going to shoot this over to an interview with Joel Bylos, the head developer for Dune Awakening. So you can learn abilities from the great schools of the universe and learn how to be a Bene Gesserit, compelling your enemies to come close to you so that you can stab them with a knife. And you combine your, you know, so you're combining melee with abilities there, right? Or you can be a sword master and leap in with a knee charge, knocking people to the ground and then stabbing them. Or you can choose to be like a trooper and you use your Shigawai reel to pull you up like a grappling hook, to pull you to high places where you can shoot down on your enemies with sniper rifles and shotguns. So there's a large variety of weapons that you can craft through our intricate crafting system in addition to these abilities that you learn as you level up your character. So you kind of have this freedom of choice, and that's really what Combined Arms is all about. It's sandbox combat. Can I explore different skill trees? Like, yes. can I be a swordsman uh, or a swordsmaster and also use the voice? Is that possible? It's absolutely possible. You just have to find the right trainer in the world who will teach you these things. So you choose in character creation, you make a choice of who was your mentor when you were young and then you choose one of the things and that's your, that determines your set of starting abilities. But then when you play the game, you find trainers in the world, you have to do things for them, but then they'll eventually teach you some of the way, you know, the path that can take, take you down some of these skills and abilities, yeah. Um, is there anything special about the base building in this game? Yeah, so we, we took what we started with in Conan Exiles, our other survival game, uh, we brought that over, then we started to add to it, right? So we've now created a system for co-op building, where you, will, you can place out holograms and other players can fill them in. So you work with your friends to build bases. You can also save your base as like an architectural blueprint that you can then sell to other players on the exchange or you can That's give incredible. to your friends. So they, you know, if you make something really cool, one of the things we saw in Conan Exiles that I really liked was that players were building the Taj Mahal. They were just building really cool buildings. And it's like, what if you could sell that to another player? That'd be cool, right? So another player might want to be able to just buy that blueprint off you and then place that out in the world and build it themselves. So we're really enabling the sharing and sort of the way the building system works, allowing it to be very cooperative. The whole political intrigue, how predominant is that in the game? I mean, we, we want players to be able to dip into it. So you start the game kind of lost in the desert, right? And then by the end of the game, maybe you're the next Baron Harkonnen. As, as you make your way through the through the game, you, you progress and you, you sort of uh, meet these factions in the world, right? The Atreides and the Harkonnen are at war. There's a war of assassins going on, as it's called. And as a player, you decide which side you want to help, which side you want to join. Then you, you know, start to partake in, in missions for those factions. And eventually, yeah, you work your way up through the ranks of the factions and maybe you take on a position of power as well. So the politics are, you know, they're, they're designed to actually encourage players 
to develop their own politics around the sandbox system. So, so we have this Landsrad, the Landsrad will be demand that players do certain things. The factions need to work together or against each other to achieve these goals, right? So there's also this sandbox element to the politics. Which also then encourages like co-op play or uh, PvP play more. Co-op play or PvP play, yeah. Yeah, there's this, um, this kind of idea that, yeah, like when people have the same objective, but they're on opposite sides, it becomes a race between them to achieve that objective and they'll do all sorts of dirty things to get to the top right. I, can I opt out of politics? Can I just live my peaceful little Swiss life in my cottage? Absolutely. You can you can play however you want. I mean, the idea is to be a sandbox and allow people to approach it how they like. Um, we have a we have one of the rules of the, one of the pillars of the game is expression and customization, and that's not just about visuals. It's customizing how you want to play the game. So it's really thinking about like, well, I really like to craft and just set up my little crafting setup and sell things on the exchange to other players. So you can do that. You can basically live your life as a crafter. You can also be an architect, as we talked about. You know, you can be a pilot, a scout. You're not really heavily involved in the fighting, but you go out and you craft maps that you sell to other players as well of the world. With some tempered optimism, I'm looking very much forward to playing Dune Awakening when it does eventually come out. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. I'll see you next time.